All right, welcome back. So we got uh, episode two, uh, 46 long. Definitely like this one a lot better than the pilot. Uh, they definitely figured out what they're doing. They smoothed out the awkwardness and the just the touchy-feely of it all in the first episode. Um, so, okay, what happens in this episode? Uh, Tony is dealing with his mother again, and I fucking hate that character. I hate that storyline, which I'll get into that in a second. Um, so he's dealing with his mother. He eventually puts her away in the uh, retirement center, retirement community. Uh, what else is going on? His nephew, Christopher, keeps stealing trucks with this idiot asshole friend of his, which is pissing off his uncle, Tony's uncle, Jr., and, um, yeah, it's pretty much it. Like, those are the two main plots. Oh, and I guess <laughs> Anthony Jr.'s teacher got a car stolen, so we get to hang out with the crew a little bit while I gotta go out and try and find the teacher's car. So, there's, like, three different plots going on, and it's really just hanging out with the different characters. Um, and it just works way better than just focusing on the single storyline, the idea of flashing back like it did in the pilot. Um... This episode still has the psychiatrist thing, but it works better this time because it's not a uh, it's not a flashback structure. He just kind of visits her like halfway through. It takes a while. It was actually so like I had forgotten all about that aspect of the show and the first scene where he sits in the office. I was like, ah, oh, damn it, shit, I forgot. That is what's going on with this show at least for a while. Um, interesting stuff we learn in this episode, or I learned because I don't think they mentioned it in the pilot. Uh, Tony's not the boss. He's not the Don. Um, nobody's the Don. There's a uh, there's an act, that, like, there's, what do you call it, like a, <laughs> like a substitute Don kind of thing going on. Uh, I don't know what happened. <laughs> they made some weird reference to since something went wrong, and then Tony got pissed. Um, so that's interesting that I don't really understand, or no one really understands exactly what the hierarchy of the levels is, you know, Don, Capo, soldiers, whatever. And then the whole, like, real estate thing that I was talking about in the first, in the first vlog about something happened that... They didn't really explain. They hinted at it again, and it's something that Christopher had done where he should have been made. And I'm almost positive, like, they're building up some kind of flashback or some kind of expo you know, explanation to that, which is really cool. That's a way better idea than just kind of, like... I like the idea that, like, the, pr the premise of the show I always thought, based on the pilot and stuff, is, you know, the 90s gangster. The 90s gangster kind of story, so he's got to go to a shrink, and he's got a family, and it's way more touchy-feely, and... Ugh. It is that, but it's, it's a lot more interesting that this is a show about what the mob is like during, you know, this time of, uh, this time in America. It's still very dated, but it works much better. The opening sequence this time, the opening teaser before the credits is, uh, like four or five of the wise guys and Tony just hanging out, counting money, I don't know what's going on, and they're watching an interview on TV about John Gotti and some guy who turned informant and wrote a book, and they're talking about the fall of the mob, and... That was really interesting. Talk about cloning and Princess Die, so it's very, very dated. But I really liked hearing those guys discuss like why the mob is all fucked up, and uh, you know, you got the Godfather Three reference, which I appreciate. And then I guess my favorite aspect of this story, or this episode, sorry, I have a bit of a cold, that's why I keep snuffling. Uh, I guess my favorite aspect of this particular seat episode is uh, I think it's Vincent Pastor's his name, Tony's like henchman dude, and another guy. They're the ones out looking for the kid's teacher's car. And uh, they got to go track down who stole it and try and find the car. And they're just, they're on their own all of a sudden. They very rarely interact with anybody else. And they go to, uh, like, the Starbucks-type place. And this is a great joke where they call it butt fucks, Which, again, very, very dated, making fun of Starbucks. But I think this is my favorite version I've ever seen of making fun of Starbucks. And there's a really great point made by one of the henchmen about how, you know, God damn it, <laughs> we're Italians. We're the ones to be fucking, we should have we had this idea. We should have been the ones to, you know, embrace it and capitalize on the idea that cappuccinos and macchiatos and they're gonna make lots and lots of money and they're pissed off culturally because it's really shitty coffee and it's not like they don't feel like it's uh, traditional and I like that and they bitch about Pizza Hut and I like I love that aspect of it I love hanging out with the guys um so yeah the other half of the show <sighs> I fucking Tony's mother I get it I understand it's a fairly it's a very common story it's a very common issue that people have in real life Parents suck, and when you get when they get older, you know how they age and what happens when their spouse dies. I get it. They're you know they gave you love, they supported you, so you love them back. I understand. I just I hate that storyline, especially because like Tony, <laughs> Tony's a fucking mobster. Like he has to deal with death. He's got to deal with people trying to kill him. He's got to deal with money and crime and 
the whole family's falling apart, he's running the city, but he's not really in charge. That's really compelling stuff. You know what's not compelling? I don't like my mom. Like, fucking A, man. Be a man. <laughs> like, don't be so whiny. Like, of course you don't like your mom. She's fucking terrible. And, like, I might... This might be my own personal bias, because, you know, my mother is a saint, but she's not an idiot. <laughs> and I don't see her becoming an idiot. Like, she understands... Like, there's a sequence in this fucking episode, literally. Like, this happens. Tony's mother starts a fire in the kitchen, and he tells her to dial 911, and they cut to her on the phone, and she literally goes... She doesn't want to dial a phone? Like, I know she's old, but fucking A, they had phones back when she was a young woman. Like, Jesus. Like, it's so frustrating. Oh, like, there's a sequence, um... There's a sequence way towards the end of the episode, or at the end of the episode, after after Tony's mom almost runs over her best friend and kills her, and then breaks her wrist, where she's Tony's like, you're gonna go into this fucking retirement center, like, you're gonna go in this community. And Tony's mom says, then just take a knife and stab me, and I was like, fucking A, hey, please, like, oh, like, you've beaten the shit out of people in this show for, you know, saying the wrong thing. Your mother is terrible, and I just, it weakens Tony's character, and I don't like it. I understand why it's there and it's supposed to be humanizing. And I, I admit I liked the last couple scenes where Tony's... Because they do put his mother... You know, he does put his mother in the retirement community. And he's got to go back to the old house that he shared where he was growing up. And he starts putting away pictures. And he's looking at himself as a kid. And his mother is a young woman. And he's very sad. And he has another one of his, like, little fainting spells thing. Which, again, badass mobster guy has fainting spells. I get that's the premise, but it's tough pill to swallow so far. But I did like seeing him be reminiscent a little bit tearful about, like... I'm, it's sad. It's sad that my mom has gotten a little bit old, a little bit senile, and she's a fucking bitch. That works. The only reason it does work, though, is because he finally acted and put her away. Like, I, it's not... It's such an obvious solution to a problem, uh, to put her away. And I hate shows that have an obvious... Like, you know she's going in that home. Like, you just... Either that... Either, either, either You either know she's going to get put away in that retirement home quick, or you know that, like, a big aspect of the plot is going to be her being annoying every episode. And I don't think any writer would ever, like hinge a show on a really annoying mother unless you're Everybody Loves Raymond. <laughs> and I should not be making comparisons to Everybody Loves Raymond during this show. Like, Sopranos should be better than this, from what I've heard. Um, so yeah. That's pretty much all I have to say, I guess. Oh, actually, there's one more thing. I noticed that it's, it's a weird visual note, but I wanted to talk about it. The sky in these shows. Um, a lot of the framing of, like, exteriors or hanging out outside of bars or wherever they're hanging out during the daytime... The skies are bright blue, and there's big fluffy clouds, and a lot of the, like, a huge portion of the frame is dedicated to showing the sky. And it's really, really beautiful, and I like it. I have no idea what the metaphor is. Like, I don't know if it's supposed to symbolize, like, that there's a lot of beauty in the world, or despite the fact that all this darkness and all this horrible shit's going on, I have no idea. But I noticed it in the first episode, which obviously pilots are much more showy, so I wasn't sure if it was going to carry over, but I really like the blue skies. I don't know what the point of that is. Um, I like the blue, cloudy skies. I like it. Um... So yeah, I mean, that's the last visual thing. And they calmed down on the steady cam this time, which I appreciate. So yeah, I'm excited for the next one, which is called um, uh, Denier, Denial, Anger, Acceptance, which I guess is, you know, stages of death. So somebody's going to die, I guess, um, which makes sense. Somebody's died every episode, I think. Um, so yeah, I'm excited for the next one. I want to keep watching. It's better than the first episode. It's not, I don't think it's brilliant television yet, um, but I enjoy hanging out with these people. And I'm sure that, I'm sure it's got this, you know, kind of Goodfellas or Dazed and Confused kind of vibe to it, where it's a hangout kind of show. It's not a driving plot kind of show. It's the more you get to know the characters. I don't even know most of these people's names yet, because it goes by so quick and they're only on screen for, you know, a couple scenes. I'm sure, you know, the show is really going to start to get brilliant in season two. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, this one was, like I said, it was 46 long, and I liked it. And I love the last scene where Tony beats the shit out of the guy who can't use a phone. Don't know why. <laughs> I thought it was funny, and it's, it was nice to see him vent. And I mean, I get it. He's venting at that dude because his mother also can't use a phone. But I, it was just a nice little thing. And their, and their stripper hangout, which is cool. It's nice that I like it when gangsters have a hangout, a place to go to. A hideout, even. Although it's clearly not a hideout, but whatever. I'm just rambling now. Anyway, see you in the next one, which is uh, the one about death. So, bye, PTFN.